we're going to be doing the shares. This is a very obscure book and it will bore most people to death. Uh, it is by published by the Victoria and Albert Museum. It is called English Chairs. His Majesty's Stationery Office, and it is dated 1951. And in the, in the British Museum, there the were guides on nearly every every subject. So you can find these old books, and you can look up really obscure spheres of collecting. So we're going to just start at the beginning and whiz through and see if anything jumps out at me. Have a, have a quick look this time to uh, help me pick out good things at random. So we've got to start with, a two, with two chairs. That chair looks to me to be 1930s. Luchins. It's not. Uh, this book by the Victorian Albert Museum says this chair is 1540. And the thing about this chair is you've got this structure in the centre, which is extremely unusual. This chair is a box chair. The book says it is 1525 and it has these linen fold panels. I doubt that is real because usually, in my experience, my modest experience, these panels come off panelling from a building. Uh, I would have ex expected this to have a lift up top. I would have expected it to have little feet to stop it going off, get it going mouldy when floors are washed. Um, it's not common to see furniture with no no, no protruding feet. I'm probably wrong because it is a Victorian Albert Museum. Who's telling what I think? It's quite st straight and boxy. Okay, this is another one. Again, it has no feet, but more shape and more height. These chairs have got beautiful worn stretches. This is a Glastonbury type chair. This one is 1600. I would have thought this was a Dutch chair with all that carving, but they're saying they're English chairs, so it must be right. So we have lots and lots of chairs. These are English chairs made of turned wood, and they are quite distinctive. The idea of this chair, based on the Warwick chair, which was a type of chair made in the, in the Midlands, is that you can sit through through it backwards, put your feet through the gaps and put elbows on the back bar. And when I was a child, people used to say, if a dozen men had these chairs and made a ring, sat in it, they could watch a cockfight and the chairs would keep the animals in the fight. That was what I was told. It probably isn't true, but it's, that's what they used to say. They don't look at all English, those chairs, but they are English chairs. This one is turned and carved, the mixture of both. This is upholstered, it has this X situation, which I would normally associate with a Savonarola chair, which is Italian. There is some protrusion at the bottom. These stretches are not on the floor. When you find them with them on the floor, they've been cut down. This is embroidery, needlework. Nice and wide, really wide chairs. That stretch is unusual. It hooks downwards. Goes along and goes down. That's extremely rare. Double bar at the front. Barley twist. This is made on a lathe. They have to move the chisel as the lathe goes to get this effect. Quite skillful. A Lancashire chair, 1640. A Yorkshire, Derbyshire chair. High chairs for child or correctional chair, perhaps. So this book shows lots of extremely well-selected furniture, much of which, as I say, does not look English to me, but it must be. This looks Dutch to me. These lovely legs on it. But the, the Berger itself, the cane work is hard to believe it's English, but it is English. Walnut chairs, 1675. This is a special chair. This is a chair with a 
mechanism to allow the back to rise and fall. This here is a sleeping chair with wide, deep sides to keep you warm, keep the drafts off you. Carved front bars, dolphins, stretches, wonderful things. 1675, gilding, japanning. This is um, lacquered. It's fake lacquer and uh, it's designed to look like a Chinese chair or an Asian chair. This is um, rib ribbon work. If the chair had upholstery coming over the front and right around the sides, it usually is a reproduction. This is from, this is Chippendale design from his book of 1754. People don't realise that Chippendale not only made stuff, but he mainly designed stuff and other people copied him with his permission, of course. He sold the designs in the book and people would ask local tradesmen to make the items. Sometimes the tradesmen were connected with Chippendale, sometimes they were actors independently of Chippendale. So the chair seat there is blank. Queen Anne, 1720. I make reproductions of these and they're, you can't tell the difference as you get up close. And the reproductions are wonderful too. This is a corner chair. This is a writing chair. You sit at the chair backwards. You can sit at the chair backwards with your legs on either side of the middle. And the drawers fold out on the sides and you can again use your elbows, lean on it and write. That's unusual, with very unusual stretches. So there's lots, as you can see, for a modest, modest book about chairs, ball and claw feet, widely copied. Gothic. They're not expensive, a lot of, the, a lot of chairs generally, but the, these special chairs would be expensive. This is Chippendale, Chinese Chippendale. And to someone in 1750 in the north of England, if they saw that, they would be gobstruck, totally gobstruck. In fact, if I saw that myself now, I would be taken, taken aback a lot. They're so beautiful. And all these designs with inlays and different features. That one's got little brass wheels on it. This is a famous chair, it's a famous type of chair, it's a Windsor chair in the Gothic style. And the two things about it are, apart from the Gothic style and the shape back, you've got this bar which is curved. It's called a crinoline stretcher. So there's three pieces of wood and it is back from the front of the chair. So there's a woman with a skirt or a man wanting to bring his legs back, could sit comfortably. This is a, another feature, the handle, handle support go backwards not straight down and it looks fantastic but it means a man with a sword on his hip can sit down french chairs french style chairs boudoir chairs that's what we had in 1777 but it's a french chair in essence as are those okay so for someone who's into chairs this is a, a nice book Shepherd White, uh, Pepper White, Sheraton, Adam. So many varieties of chair, hall chairs. They're not, they're not expensive even now. Even a good one. This is um, well, it's Regency. It's trying to be Egyptian. It's trying to be Roman. 
and it's rather exotic. Some of the Anglo-Indian stuff is not a million, a million, not a million miles off that. This chair just now has got three legs. It seems. It's coming up to federal. It's coming up to regency. Coming up, coming up to federal. Coming up to empire style. Ram's horn chair arms, inlaid brass. They're lovely things to have, but they're not very safe to use. If you're in a dining room when you have a party, when you have these chairs. If the party gets loud, someone's going to swing on the chair and break the chair. And they're going to injure themselves. So people are very these days. People are very careful with with, with antique chairs. Uh, in commercial settings, you'll never find an antique chair anymore unless it's really strong. And domestically, they're more for decoration. It's as I say, not com I wouldn't not advise anyone to use a necessarily use an antique dining chair. And a nice photograph of a, a Regency chair it's redid this is a gillows it might not be a gillows chair this is a gillows feature this reading uh it's got the brass inlays that is a fantastic thing 1820 okay so we've, we've done english chairs to death the lesson of, of the book is the the quality of these publications by Victoria and Albert Museum. Um, you can find all of this on the internet if you want to, but it'll take a long time to find all of that. Okay, thank you.